Hey guys, I of Sauron Designs here and today I'm gonna show you how to make an awesome helmet with very cheap materials. Let's go! So here's a couple of examples of what you can do with this technique. For example, a couple of years ago I made this death stroke helmet with just the same technique. The back part is made of foam so it comes apart pretty easily and it's more flexible this way. So you can see this comes apart. The same thing you can do with both sides, just hard material for example. The black mask I made is very intricate det detail if, if you can see this here. Lots of different details and the same thing it comes apart at the middle so you can put your head in. And for this tutorial I'm going to show you how I made this. This Batman mask from Arkham Knight is not going to be for wear specifically. This is going to be molded and cast in urethane, but it's the same technique. And I'm going to show you in this tutorial how I made this. So let's go. The materials you need are heavy printer paper, 200 grams per square meter or up. Any type of glue, either super glue or hot glue is fine. Any sort of cling film, masking tape, paper mache, paper clay, you can either use the store-bought stuff or make your own. I will include a link to how to make paper clay in the description. Any brand of filler primer and any brand of spot putty. Tools you are gonna need are any pair of scissors, an exacto or crafting knife, different grids of sandpaper and a set of needle files. Okay, before we start into this tutorial, I have to tell you one important information. I'm using a 3D model for this project that is ripped from the game files. I'm not going to explain how the file is ripped from the game because if you need to model or work with any 3D models, you can find most 3D models online. Or if you don't even want to work with 3D modeling, you can also find the finished Peppakura files for most uh, well-known uh, objects online. For example, if you want to make an Iron Man helmet, you can just Google for Iron Man Peppakura and you will find the exact file that you need. So with this knowledge, let's dive into the tutorial, let's go. First off, I start editing the model that's ripped from the game, so I have it in separate parts. I split it up into separate parts, so it's easier to modify and work with in Peppakura Designer. Once you import the file into Peppakura Designer, it will look something like this, so you have to scale, sort and arrange it onto the workspace. There are lots of Peppakura tutorials on YouTube, so check those out. I will link one in the description. After printing, you can start to put it together. The hardest part about this is getting the scale just right. Even though I have lots of experience with Peppakura, I still had to build this twice because I scaled it too big the first time. As you can see, the second version fits perfectly. The chin strap was added by wrapping my chin in cling film and then putting masking tape over it. Once I'm happy with everything, I start with the paper mache. I only paper mache the top and the sides. This is done to ensure stability so the paper model doesn't get too soggy and starts warping. I also made a chin inlay for the mask. This is done by wrapping my lower face in cling film, then putting masking tape over it and then paper mache on top of that. Once the paper mache is dried, I put on the mask on top of it, draw out the outline and then take everything off and glue it together. Then I put one layer of paper mache on all of the outside, three layers on the inside and once that is done, I fill in the ears with expanding foam because it's hard to get paper mache inside. When the paper mache is dry, I start putting paper clay on the helmet. I do this in sections because I don't want the helmet to get soggy and lose stability, since the paper clay is made with water and will soak into the paper model. Once the whole helmet is covered in paper clay and it has dried, I draw out the lines for all the details and creases I want to have in my helmet. After that is done, it's time for sanding. Be sure to always wear a dust mask because you're gonna generate lots of sanding dust. After you sand it for a couple of hours, you will have something like this. There will still be lots of imperfections, holes and asymmetries in the helmet, so you gotta repeat this as often as necessary. If a part of your helmet is warped, you can just cut out the warped piece with an X-Acto knife and fill it in with more paper clay. Here I realized that the shapes of the ears are slightly different, so I added more paper clay to make it symmetrical. Once you're happy with your overall shape, spray your project with a couple of layers of filler primer and then it's time for more sanding, this time with finer grade sandpaper to get a nice surface. Repeat this process until you're happy with your surface. 
Because the side inlays are so intricate, I decided to laser cut them. I drew up a design in Illustrator and then cut it out of cereal box cardboard. I used this material because it's flexible, easy to glue and has a nice surface. A quick coat of black spray paint and it's good to go. If you have tiny pinholes that the filler primer doesn't fix, use spot filler to fill them in. Once that is cured, sand it again, give it another coat of primer and then you should have a finished result that looks something like this. Okay, these are the basic steps for paper mache and paper clay. There's a few small steps that I didn't explain in the tutorial, especially how you cut this apart and how you put it back together. Because the Batman helmet is just one piece that's for molding and casting, there's no need for, for wearing it, but I'm gonna explain it to you on the black mask helmet. Basically, I just cut along the line where I wanna separate it. And once it's separated, I put two magnets in at the bottom of the helmet and the rubber band at the top. So this way if I pull it apart like this, you can see it just hangs there on the rubber band. And if I put it back together like this, you can see it just snaps into place. That's how you open and close the helmet, that's how you fasten it, that's how it's done. Okay, that's it for this technique. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please share your work with me if you use this for anything. If you want to follow me on my other social media pages, there's a link to Facebook and Instagram in the bottom. And if you want to support me financially, there's also a Patreon down below. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you liked it. See you next time. Bye. Zoom. Zoom.